I was muted! Hey! Hey, yeah, hey, yo, hello, welcome to the stream! What are we doing today? Well, we're gonna be opening up a board game. Highest quality content right here in this thing. Ah, uh, yeah, so I went back to the office today because they're like, oh, we have like a new employee and we should like, you know, we should all like say hi to him in person and like, you know, things are starting to open up where I live. And uh, we went out to eat and I had a beer. Yeah, I had a beer and I'm like, oh boy, I am not feeling good. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I'm such a lightweight. <laughs> I'm such a lightweight, man. It's, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be playing. I'm, I'm not really playing anything, I suppose, or like even like making anything. I'm just going to be opening up this box and reading the rules. Um, this is Arkham Horror. Uh, the Arkham Horror series is based off of the, you know, the Lovecraftian Cthulhu mythos. Um, we have, right here, the card game version. And, uh, I'm... Arkham Horror has, like, a lot of, like, you know... It's very dear to my heart, you know? Because Arkham Horror is the first board game I... Like, second edition Arkham Horror was the first board game I've ever played. And that's, like, a lot. Like, that is very much, like... Great... Like, every, every time I tell people that, like, Arkham Horror second edition was my first board game, everyone, like, thinks that didn't turn you off board games completely. Because it's, like, really rules-dense, right? It, it was one of the, like, it's an older board game, so it's just, like, it is very dense, and it's, like, it takes, like, six hours to play. So, uh, but, like, I enjoyed it because it was kind of like a, uh, D it was almost like an RPG session, you know? And this was before I played D&D, so I was like, oh yeah, like, you know, like, invite my friends over, play this board game. So yeah, let's, uh, get to it. I'm, uh, let's open this up. Let's see. I'm just gonna use my X-Acto knife to remove the plastic here, and we'll get going. Ah, right. Let's see here. But yeah, like, today, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling my hottest right now, but I think I can do something short like this. I wanted, I, I considered cancelling today's stream, but then I was like, you know what, I've been cancelling a lot of, um, I've been cancelling a lot of my streams, like, you know, like, or, I've been streaming two times a week a lot, and then, like, I'm like, I should, I should try doing, like, a shorter, shorter one instead. Even if it changes up my plans. Ooh, there's also like bits I get to uh, take out. All right, so learn to play, and there's the rule of reference, and then uh, campaign guide. So I believe like this game is like this game is a lot of like story based. It's like a story based. You go through it and you play this board game. So let's let's see here. Oh, I love I love disconnecting bits, and here are the cards. I think first let's just go through the cards and like the investigator cards. So let's see here. Hmm. Can't really read. Let's see. You, can you can you guys read that? I don't think it's pretty hard. I think it's pretty hard to read it. There we go. Hey, Michael Philpot. Hey, welcome to stream. Yeah, we're doing. We're. I'm just opening up a box. <laughs> That's today's stream. I, I I'm I'm gonna I'm just like opening up the. Um, the Arkham Horror Living Card Game Box, and uh, had, I had an idea of actually like playing this on stream since it's a uh, one-player game, but um, yeah, I just uh, think it's really fun. So let's see, we have Roland Banks, the Fed. Uh, let's see, he agency detective. After you defeat an enemy, discover one clue at your location. Okay, okay. Um, my favorite character in Arkham Horror was this guy called Joe Diamond. Yo, Joe Diamond is... Joe Diamond was the coolest. I have, like, such fond memories playing as Joe Diamond. I don't even consider... I don't think he's, like, even, like, a high-tier character or anything like that. But I'm just like, his name's cool. So yeah, like, Joe Diamond's cool. Alright, so, 9 health, 5, five insanity. So in the Arkham Horror, so usually you have two health bars in um, the Arkham Horror games. You have health and you have sanity. So this guy's a bit more of a tank. 
Daisy Walker, the librarian. Ah, oh, come on, let's see here. Uh, I can just read the text you made. Take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used on tome abilities. Uh, mystic effect, plus zero. If you succeed, draw one card for each tome you control. All right. Skids O'Toole. The ex-con. You always have, like, you know, a couple, like, um... You know, they always have like the lawman, you have like the like, you know, the dame, you have uh, you have uh, you know, like the criminal elements in this. And then they're all like working together to uh, get rid of like the evil, you know, like the eldritch horrors that are taking over the world, you know? Let's see, um, criminal. Uh, during your turn, spend two resources. You may take an additional turn, uh, take an additional action this turn, okay. That's actually pretty strong because uh, usually in board games, like action, you want like action economy. So this lets you give, um, let you have more action economy during your thing. You just need to spend money for it. Okay. Oh, there's backsides. Oh shit! I I, I missed the backsides. Here, 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 here. Let me let me go back to uh, Roland Banks and Daisy Walker and just read their backstories. All right, Roland Banks. Roland had always taken comfort in procedure and rules. As an agent in the Bureau, he was refer relieved to have guidelines to follow in any given situation. But lately, his Federal Agent's Handbook... Uh, can you guys read that? Let's see. But lately, his Federal Agent's Handbook has had been entirely unhelpful given the cases he'd been assigned. Try as he might, Roland could not find no mention of what to do when confronted with strange creatures, gates through time and space, or magic spells. If he hadn't seen it with his own eyes, he would never have believed it. There's no way his superiors would understand. Roland knew he would have to handle this one himself. Uh, just like, you know, private eye character, you know, you have like the private eye characters. The art's also really good too. I really enjoy like Fantasy Flight's art. Okay. Let's go read uh, Daisy Walker's. Let's see, Daisy Walker, how are you? Let's see. As a respected librarian at Miss Tonic University, Daisy had always felt books were the most important thing in her life. She explored had always or uh, she explored in fiction and abhorred in life horror, violence, and fear. Then she stumbled across John D. translation the John D. translation of the Necronomicon. It was blasphemous, unholy, and too awful to read, but given her studies in obscure and occult subjects, Daisy knew there was more truth than fiction within the book's pages. She began to wonder what other secrets uh, the restricted collection of the Born Library held. Yeah, Mississippi University is... You always have like the character that's like the scholar. Alright, let's go do uh, Skids O'Toole. Let's see what Skids O'Toole is like. And let me see here. All right. Skids hadn't planned a life of crime, but sometimes doing the right thing means get your hands dirty. The cops didn't care that Skids uh, needed the money for his mother's operations. His mother died of her illness during the second year of her sentence. Of his sentence, his cellmate Brad Hollins told him that there were worse face, uh, fates than death. He ranted and ranted. Uh, he ranted and raved in a quiet voice every evening about the old ones and told Skids about the bizarre adventures he'd had while dreaming. Skids didn't give in, give it much thought until the night he woke to the sight of a cellmate bursting into flames. When Skids was finally released, he returned to Arkham looking for answers. Ah, uh, here we go. Here's Agnes. Here's a here's Agnes Baker, the waitress. OP, OP girl in thir in um, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. She's like... So, like... She's like a waitress, but she has, like, part of, like, a witch coven. And, like, she, like, has OP magic powers. Alright. Agnes Baker may be just an unassuming waitress in this life, but in a previous life, in a time and age undreamed of in the modern world, she had been a powerful witch. It began when she found... A strange artifact, a key of some kind, in a dusty collection of family belongings in her attics. When she touched it, when she touched it, 
the memories came flooding back along with one word, Hyperborea. Uh, Hyperborea. The more she delved into the vicious, uh, the visions and memories of her former life, the stronger her powers grew, and the more frightened she became. Here she is, Ag Agnes, Agnes Baker. All right, let's see, and then we have uh, Wendy Adams. Let's see, the urchin. She's um, she's in, like another character that's. Uh, I think she's pretty good. She's um, about like she usually has a lot of avoidance abilities in the other games. So like she's good at like stay she, like she's um, considered a survivor character. So she's good at like avoiding combat and stuff like that, which is actually pretty useful because uh, Arkham Horror isn't like a game about like killing monsters. It's about like sealing them away and stuff like that. Like sealing is much more important than actually murder murdering them. Let's see. Here we go. Mama used to let Wendy play with her necklace when she was small. Mama would tell her stories and Wendy would spin the necklace and watch it as it glittered. Then word came that her father had been lost at sea and Mama started acting strange, drawing unusual symbols and chalk all over the house. They took Mama to the asylum and Wendy went to the orphanage. Before they took her away, Mama gave the necklace to protect her. Wendy stayed in the orphanage for several years before running away, deciding that she could take care, uh, take better care of herself on her own. All right, those are the things, and I guess we have a bunch of other cards. I don't know if like going through these would be. Um, let's see. I don't know if like going through these would be spoilers for me actually. Study locations. Hmm. I have no context for any of these cards, I realize, because I need to actually read. I need to actually read. But yeah, like, the art, the artwork is so good. Night Gone, oh, here's some monsters, Hunting Night Gone. The Wings of, On Wings of Darkness, that's cool. Locked Door. Ooh, Screeching Byaki. There, you guys see that? Boom. Uh, the art's so cool. The yellow sign. Ooh, Yithian Observer. Yo, the art, the art's really rad. Like, I, I got, I, I was like really tempted to like get into like Shadowverse just a while ago because I was watching Kali stream Shadowverse with uh, Giguk, and I was like, yo, I, I kind of want to play a card game. And I decided to play this because uh, I like living card games much better than like, um, you know, like collectible card games. Just because collectible card games are just gacha. And I'm, I'm straight up like, I have gacha tendencies of like wanting to roll more and more and more. And then I'm like, shoot, I shouldn't do this. So living card games are better because you know what you're getting, you know? All right. Let's see. Relentless Dark Young. Ooh. Yeah, like all these monsters are cool looking. Ooh, goat spawn. Goat spawn! Check it out. Get that goat head. Alright. Oh, it's a young deep one. Look how cute he is. He's so cute. He's so adorable. Neat. Dreams of Relay. Okay. Omen, Revelation. Nice. I guess I should look through some of the other stuff too. Let's see. I hope I don't actually ac accidentally spoil something. Okay, you got your acolyte, your your basic your basic cultist. You know, you always have to have a bunch of these. Let's see who else is there. Obscuring fog. Ooh, this is this is a neat one. Crit chill. I think this is a, oh, this is a treachery. So these are like bad things that like can happen to you. Of course, ancient evils. You can't have, you can't have an Arkham Horror game without ancient evils. Dissonant voices. This is a good 5e spell. Good 5e spell, you know? Then rotting remains. Yeah. Let's see. Ooh, and then grasping hands. Hazard. 
And this looks like, uh, looks like just, you know, all these cards are just gonna be getting in your way. Ooh. Ghoul Minion. Ghoul Minion. There we go. Kind of creepy. Definitely creepy looking. Ooh, ooh, okay, okay, okay. Swarm of rats. I know, like, it's not, like, that impressive of a monster, but, yo, I don't, like, want to be swarmed by anything, you know? You know, like, the thing of, like, would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or, like, a bunch of duck-sized horses? Like, yo, getting attacked by a swarm? Not cool. I don't want to deal with that. Let's see. Umidora's Wrath. Okay, it's a curse. Let's see. Oh, here's the actual. Oh, this is the actual dark one. Umadora. Wait. Um. Umor. Umor. Umordoth. Yeah, something like that. There we go. There we go. Let me focus on that. There we go. Look at that guy. Oh, okay. We got a. Uh, we got some like human. O oh wait, wait, wait. No, no. This is uh. Ruth Turner, the the mortician, huh? She's she's an enemy. I, I hope I didn't spoil myself with these characters. Oh shit! Maybe. Let's see. Oh, these guys are um, yeah, these are like different cultists, and I believe believe I like bought them in different games. Hey, papaya doodles, welcome, welcome to the stream. Nice, you made it. Yeah, I'm just kind of like going through uh, the Arkham Horror card game. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. I, I might I might play this on stream because it is a one player game, but uh, I, I feel like I need to figure out how to do it, but I think it'd be fun. It'd be fun, it'd be like fun to like have you all like watch and see it. We are, yes, we are looking at cards because uh, that is what I'm doing. That is 100% what I'm doing. I. Uh, I'm not feeling my 100% best, and I got a new card game, so I'm just gonna be like opening up cards and just like chilling and talking. And I'm gonna be uh, po I'm gonna be popping these things out. Not 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 the most exciting. It's not the most exciting of streams, but but um, I'm gonna be having fun with it. Ah, uh, okay. There's like a nice like satisfaction of like popping out like cardboard bits from board game little tokens. Even though I like rarely actually I rarely actually use these tokens when playing board games. I use um I tend to actually use dice for these since they make for better counters. All right. Board games are a lot of fun though. But yeah, this is a like this is kind of like a story based card game. Um like uh, the Arkham Horror series, like it, this game like tell like tells a story, and you play through it by like making a deck of like you know assembling your deck, like you would like a um, kind of like a, a collectible card game, except you know without having like to purchase like a bazillion cards and hoping you get the rep ones you want. But yeah. Other than that, this is just like a uh, just talking stream where just like shoot the breeze, uh, shoot the breeze. How's how's everyone's days? How is everyone's days going? Ah, uh, I really needed. I I, I I need to hydrate actually. I need to drink water. I was gonna build a gunplot today, but then I'm like, ah, uh, ah, uh, I don't, I don't really feel like it. But I'm actually starting to feel better now. I'm starting to feel better from like. I can't believe I didn't say this, but like, I felt hungover like a couple hours. Like, I felt hungover like a couple hours ago, and I had like one beer. Ah, drinking water. But yeah, also like this weekend, like I had to pack for you know like nice like vacation for you know my vacation, you know, where I'm going. I'm going on a romantic getaway with uh, my waifu, you know? And yeah, like, you know, you get that feeling when you're going on vacation, you feel like there's more work that goes into your vacation, you feel like you're not even taking a break. 
I get that sometimes, you know? And then like when I get back, I'm like, man, I need a break from my vacation, you know? It's such a weird problem to have. It's such a weird problem to have. Uh, but yeah, popping these things out. Let's see. And then I'll probably just be going over the rules too. I'll probably just be going over the rules too, just cause, uh, you know, I can. Uh, let's see. Yeah, popping, popping these things out is also, it's like building a Gunpla model, you know, like, except I don't have to do it. Oh, I've been building, I've been building a lot of furniture recently, and, uh, like, off stream, just been, like, building furniture, and I'm just thinking, oh, this isn't as hard as, like, the Zaku model that I built. Even though, like, I'm grabbing, like, a screwdriver and, like, tightening bolts in, stuff like that, like, it's a different type of difficulty. Like with furniture, with furniture, it's like, you know, it's, I feel like it's more muscle, but Gunpla models like require a lot of dexterity. There we go. This one. Then let's go and uh, take these ones. I have no idea what any of these things mean. There we go. Pop that out. This is a very satisfying experience. But yeah, why not? Uh, I don't know why, but I felt like I had a hard time finding this game, you know? Like, um... When I, uh, played- when I was, like, trying to find this game, like, a year back ago, like, I just had a hard time finding it. I was like, dang, like, why can't I ever find this game? Um... But yeah, I think, uh, it's cool that, like, I have it now, and then, like, I'm like, cool, I found it at my local game store. Local game stores are good, everyone. They're fun. Uh, they took probably definitely took a hit during um, you know during the pandemic, but uh, you know it's always good to like try to support them when you can. Okay, yeah, there's a couple good ones like in my area where I live. Uh, unfortunately, I uh, can't really talk too much about them, but like one of the ones I uh, one of the ones that I. Um, I'm close to is a really cool one because it's like a restaurant and a um, and you can like rent board games and play and like play like while you play you know like play while you eat and stuff like that. It's so cool, but then like their models, their games tend to have missing pieces, so you always kind of like worry like you kind of have to worry. Like I played Takenoko at a place, and then some like. They had like a placeholder for like the missing panda piece because some kid probably took the panda piece from the board game place. And it's like, oh, that sucks. It's like it's a cute panda. Yeah, but yeah, board games are always the board games are always fun, you know. Uh, I think I had like the problem like a while ago because uh, you know when you were when I was younger and. Well, you know, like we couldn't, we played video games as kids, right? And we still want to play games, but a lot of games uh, moved away from local co op. So we couldn't actually play video game. Like, you know, me and my buddies, like, we couldn't actually play video games together, right? It was a weird problem to have. Like, oh, it's like, oh, like, we can't just, like, hang out at your house because, like, what are we going to do? Like, we can't do anything. And I, like, started, that's when I started getting to board games. All right. Let's open up this next card. Yeah, I, these are the items. So these are, this is gonna be like what you do with deck build, like how you build your deck, I believe. All right, let's see here. We got, let's see, I hope you can see that. Roland's point thirty eight special, uses ammo, cover up, uh, put a cover up into play in your threat area with three clues on it. When you would discover one or more clues in your location, yeah, in your location, discard that many clues from the cover up instead. Okay. Daisy's tote bag. Yo, okay, like, be real. Tote bags are amazing. Like, I highly, highly suggest getting a bag. Like, no matter what your gender is, you know, whether you be a guy or a gal or a non-binary pal, you you should probably just uh. You know, 
Just go and uh, carry a tote bag around. It ca you can carry your stuff in it, you know? Oh, okay, so Daisy also carries the Necronomicon in her. Um, weakness. Okay, okay, so everyone has like a main thing and a weakness associated with them. Put the Necronomicon into play in your in your threat area with three horror on it. It cannot, be, it cannot leave play while it has one horror on it. Okay. On the lamb. Okay, this is uh, Skid's, uh, Skid's thing. Since he's a criminal and he's like on the run, I suppose. Uh, fast play after your turn begins till the end of the round. Non elite enemies cannot attack you. Oh, that's good. That's good. When you're playing like Arkham Horror games, where you like, you always want to just run away from enemies. It's much. It is much better than uh, actually fighting an enemy because when you fight an enemy, you take just like being in the presence of like an eldritch horror like will cause sanity damage, right? And that's always been a thing about like Lovecraftian horror. Although I do follow a couple of Lovecraftian like VTubers, and I, I don't think my mind's gone crazy just yet. All right, hospital debts. Oh boy, yeah, this that's a uh, skids skids weaknesses. Let's see, put hospital debts into play in the threat area. Yeah, so everyone seems to have a um, everyone seems to have like a strength, like a card that's really good for them, and then a weakness. All right, Agnes Baker. After I play, after you play a spell, draw one card. That's good. Card draw is always good. Uh, her weakness is Dark Memory. Place one Doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Oh, that's scary. That's scary. That's very scary. And uh, this because um, Doom is like how the game wins, right? Go Doom is like your lose condition. So like. Agnes has a thing that like causes Doom to occur. That's frightening, but she's usually like pretty busted in other regards to like balance, balance that out. Wendy's amulet, Wendy Adams deck only. You may play the topmost event in your card pile as if it were in your heart. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Abandon. Oh, she's so alone. She's alone. So let's see. Um. Abandon alone, Revelation, take two direct horror and remove all cards in your discard pile from the game. Ouch! Ouch! That hurts. Okay. Got a Glock. We got .5 automatic. We have guns. Physical training. Beat cop. Uh... Let's see, you gain plus one strength, and you can sac you can sacrifice it by and deal more damage in your location. First aid. Machete! Machete! You guys watch that movie? Machete? Ma machete? It's always a lot of fun. It's a fun movie. Let's see, get uh, strength for this attack. If the attack hits enemy, uh, is the only enemy you're engaged with, uh, attack deals another plus one damage. All right, guard dog. Let's see, when enemy attacks, deals damage to guard dog, deal one damage. Okay. Evidence, fast. Uh, play after you uh, defeat an enemy, discover a clue in your location. Dodge, all right. Let's see, dynamite blast. Choose either your location or a connecting location. Deal three damage to each enemy and to each investigator at the chosen location. All right, vicious blow. If this skill test is successful during an attack, then deal does plus one damage. Extra ammo. All right, police badge. Beat another beat cop. Shotgun. Shotguns are always good. Like I use two ammo, spend one ammo fight to get plus three for the attack instead of doing standard damage. This attack deals one damage for each uh, point you succeed. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Magnifying glass probably gets you clues. Old book of lore, research librarian. Another ally cards. Dr. Milan Christopher. Professor at etymology. Hyper awareness. Ooh, this is a really cool looking card. Here, let me see. This card's pretty cool looking. Hey Hatch! Hey Hatch! Welcome to the stream! Yeah, I'm uh... I'm doing a box opening of uh, the Arkham Horror game, uh, the Arkham Horror LCG, and yeah, it's it's 
It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I might try to play this on stream. I don't know how. I, I don't know how yet because it seems like my webcam doesn't really like to focus on the cards. But it might be fun to try out like playing like an Arkham Horror game. I love. I love. I love the Arkham Horror games too. Like I have like all of them. Even even like. I have second edition Arkham Horror, and then uh, I have Eldritch Horror, and then I have third edition Arkham Horror, and then I think I have um, there's one of them which was like Arkham Horror Light. I forgot what the name of it, but I had that game too. But I love all these games. I love the artwork. I'm just kind of like gushing over the artwork and cards. How it be? Arkham Horror is really sexy. Yeah. Let's see. All right. What's this? Mind over matter. Okay. Yeah, so this is like the card game. This is like the card game version. So it has a uh, one player. It's it's actually you can play it as. I mean, any of the Arkham Horror games you can play with one person, but this is like a one to two player game. And I've been trying to think of like ideas of what to do with like taking advantage of this. I wonder if like I could like put up the card, like have chat like be player two. I I, I don't know how I do that, but I want that to happen. I might not try that later. I might, I might have to wait for this. But anyways, barricade. Yo, like tentacles. Tentacles are like I love. I love how like even though like the stories are rather dated, you know, like the idea of like eldritch horror. This like is it's creepy to this day, you know. Deduction. But. I think I was mentioning how like I watch you, I watch you, and I watch uh, Cereza, and like both of you are like eldritch entities. I'm like, I don't think I've gone insane yet, you know. I think I still have my mind intact. Let's see, magnifying glass. All right, another couple clue things. Disc of Itzamna. Itzamna. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I, I, I'm not done yet too. Like, I, it looks like I'm done opening this box, but I got another Arkham Horror box I can, I, I can, I can get. I got like an expansion too. Uh, it's like biggest impulse buy. I'm like, I. So the story what story is? Um, we met up at work, uh, in person, and I had one beer. I had one beer because uh, we got taken out to lunch, and I had one beer, and uh, but to be fair, to be fair. I drink, I drink stouts, so that was like an 8% alcohol beer, but I had one beer, and then I went to the board game shop, and I'm like, hey, I was looking for this board, I was looking for the Arkham Horror board game. Oh, there's like a lot of stuff here. I'm gonna just buy this one and like an expansion. I have a couple other board game, and I bought like one other board game, which was like an African theme uh, board game. They were uh, both the uh, Eldritch uh, adjacent foxes, but wildly different designs and themes. And I think that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you guys are really cool. Like I really like like your theme. I, I love your guys' themes. Let's see, pickpocketing. Okay, these are like get money cards. All right. You may take an additional action. Hard knocks. Oh wait, I think this is still part of the. Um... Okay, this is part of the criminal the criminals deck, like uh, the ex cons deck. Uh, let's see. Also, just like. The names of these characters. The names of these characters are the best. Like, you got Roland Banks. Roland Banks is the Fed. You know, like he's the Fed. He's the cop. He's the man of the law. And you got Wendy Adams. She's like the urchin who's trying to just live, make her life in this like tough world. You know, and she's an orphan. And then you have Agnes Baker, who's the uh, you know you have Agnes Baker, who is the um, she's like a normal assuming waitress, but she was like a like highly powerful witch in her previous life, and now like her memories of her past life are driving her insane. And then Skids O'Toole, he's the like con man. He's just, just trying to like he's uh, the guy's trying to figure it out. And then there's like Daisy Walker. Daisy Walker is like the librarian. She's part of the university. She's like researching these things um they have um they're missing some of the characters that i remember like are really memorable like um there is like this girl she's like super rich and that was like her power essentially it's like she just like made money i forgot what her name was though like all i remember is joe diamond because <laughs> joe diamond's such a cool name and i was like that that has energy oh your boy roland Let's see. Burglary. 
Okay. Hard knocks. Backstab. Okay. Sneak attack. Oh, this guy's this guy's a rogue. This guy's 100% a rogue. Opportunist. Okay. Deluca. Hot streak. Ooh. Okay. I really like these cards. Oh, okay, we're getting to. I think this is Agnes' deck. It's since it's uh, lined with purple. Let's see. Forbidden knowledge. Okay, this is like lockpick. Holy rosary. Gotta pray those spirits away. Ooh, shriveling. Oh, that's such a cool. I don't know if you guys can see it. Look at that cool effect. Oh my god, the the artwork on this game is neat. I love it. Okay, scrying. Oh man, I wish I had the ability to just like pour like cream in my coffee and then like ha be able to like determine the future with that. Okay. Or like tea, you know, like how like you have like people who like um, use tea leaves and then like every culture has their own like cool, unique, like, you know, like fortune telling trick you from like random things. Like I remember Golden Camel, you had that like fortune teller lady who would, like she would put a skull on like, you know, like a skull of an animal on her head and then like drop it down the way it dropped down, like told her the future. All right. Arcane studies, arcane initiate. Ooh, drawn to the flame. I like this card. I like the look of this card. Let's see. Boy, yeah. Ward of Protection. Blinding Light. Flashbang! Flashbang. Fear this. Oh, this is cool looking. This is cool looking. Mind Wipe. Alright, alright, alright. So, fast spell. Um, play after a phase begins. Choose a non elite enemy at your location. Treat the chosen enemy. Uh, enemies printed text box as if it were blank, except for traits until the end of the phase. Oh, okay, so that's like some crowd control. Nice crowd control ability. Alright. Book of the Shadows. Let's see. Nice. Grotesque statue. Yeah. Uh, this is exciting. I can't wait to, like, play this. Alright, alright. This is, um... What was her name? Um, Wendy Adams. Wendy Adams. Leather coat. Armor. Uh, the coat was not the most fashionable choice, but it did feel warm and reassuring in its bulk. Scavenging. Baseball bat. Okay, okay. Rabbit's foot. Oh, you have a kitty! That's like the most evil looking kitty! Uh, let's see, discard stray cat, automatically evade non-elite enemy at your location. Oh my god, that's like... Uh, you're just like, she's just like, has a cat and she just throws a cat at a monster. Like, you know, you imagine this elder tour and she's like, here, take my cat, and then just runs away. <laughs> That's so mean. Um, Arkham Horror has like a lot of like these like uh, ally cards, like with dogs and cats. Just be like, sacrifice dog for safety. I'm like, no, I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I remember a story of like playing uh, Arkham Horror, and someone had like the dog, like a dog, and he was like pinned in a corner for like multiple rounds. We're like, yo, you can use your dog to like escape. He's like, no, I can't kill this dog. And we're like. Fair, fair. But it made a good story because it was like, uh, I think the character's name was like Ash Can Pete. Uh, yeah, like Ash Can Pete. And he was like inside like a haunted house, right? And then uh, he, like, all the monsters were just surrounding him. He just, he could not leave. Otherwise, he'd have to fight like five monsters. And we're like busy trying to like end the game, right? So we're like, buddy, we can't, we can't do anything. It was, but it's a nice, like, cool story cinematic moment. And that's what I really like about Arkham Horror. Because it was like my introduction to like roleplay before like, you know, I actually played D&D &D and stuff like that. But it was a lot of fun. Like I still enjoy like the stories like you get out of this out of these games, you know? And it's like organic stories from like playing the game. Let's see. Dig deep. Like I had we had a time where like someone like um he ended the game, but he had to like kill but like his character had to be like lost into time and space for all eternity, right? Um, just because of like how the rule, like closing the gate works. Um, like he closed the gate, but ended up like lost in time. And we're like, no, mobster dude, mobster buddy. <laughs> I don't remember all the name. I don't remember. I think his name is Malcolm. I think his name was Malcolm or something. Uh, let's see, cunning distraction. All right, automatically. Oh, that's such a good card. That's a, that's, that, that's a good card. All right. It's a five cost. It's a event five costs. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, but uh, 
Look what I found! What did you find? The Eternal Darkness, that's what you found. Let's see, play after you fail a skill test by two or less while investigating. Lucky! Okay, alright. Oh, I think it's lucky because the thing eats her shoe instead of, uh, you know, eating her. Uh, fast, play when you fail a skill test, alright. Survival instinct. Um, so the skill test is successful during an invasion attempt. The evading investigator may immediately disengage. Okay, okay. Aquina, forgotten daughter. Oh, that's an ally. All right, all right, all right. Who is she? Don't be frightened by what you see. Be frightened by what you cannot see. Okay. When an enemy attacks you, exhaust Aquina and deal one horror to her. Deal that enemy's damage to another enemy at your location instead. You still take the horror dealt by the attack. Okay. Close call. Misfortune, will to survive. Yeah, okay. Like, I gotta say, Agnes has like the most metal, like, metal cards, right? Like, she has like the, well not Agnes, um, uh, well, well, shoot, Wendy, Wendy. Wendy has like the most metal cards. Like, geez, Wendy, Wendy, I wanna give you a hug. All right, knife. These are just like, I think these are just neutral cards, which you can just grab to build your deck. Cash, emergency cash, ammo, guts, alright. Perception, max committed per skill, okay. I need to definitely like check out like the rule, I need to read the rules. Alright, what's over here? Amnesia, okay these seems to be like cards that like you add to your deck and then like you don't want to draw them, but you have to draw them. Okay. Alright. Yeah, like Psychosis, Haunted. Ooh, that's a bloody card. Mob Enforcer, Criminal. Tw Silver Twilight, Acolyte. Okay. Lita Chandler, okay. Hmm. Alright, alright. So those are all like the cards that you, you as a, use as a player can use. Let's see. Alright. Got this. And there we go. Let's see. And then. And then. Ah, spell. Oh, shit. Shit. Headphones popped off. Got it. Ah, sorry. A little bit scuffed. Alright. I uh, also got uh, the expansion, uh, the Path of Carcosa. Let's see. For weeks, the upcoming performance of The King in Yellow has been the talk of the town. But after researching the play's dark history, you're convinced something foul is at work. Disappearances, suicides, delusions, insanity. Wherever the King in Yellow is performed, madness follows close behind. No connections have been proven, but that's never stopped you before. Uh, the Path of Carcosa, one to four investigators, search for the truth about the notorious play, exploring the ward theater, attending a formal dinner party hosted by the cast and crew. Uh, with every answer, uh, the mystery only deepens, and the investigator falls into madness. The expansion contains the first two scenarios of the Path of Carcosa campaign, as well as a new investigator and player cards that increases customization options in the game. Cool. Um... I got this because, um, let's see, my wife likes uh, seeing like people of color represented in like nerd culture and board games. So I got this. I got this because I was like, oh, cool! I can I can get her to I can get her to play with me. <laughs> the reason, only reason why I got only reason why I got this. Okay, not the only reason, but I do. But it's like you know, it's cool. Uh, I think I'll I think I'll uh, hold off on opening that. But yeah, I think that was. Nice light stream. Uh, I'm feeling good. I mean, I'm feeling better. Let's uh, let's uh, read the rule book. Let's see. Okay, Knight of the Zealot. Okay, this is a cam campaign guide. I don't know if I should uh, read this too much. Otherwise, uh, I might. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not read until the end of the scenario. Okay, okay. So yeah, I'm gonna have to 
hold off on reading some of this stuff. Okay, okay. I need to see the... Learn how to play. Let's, let's see, okay. Alright, game overview. I know you guys can't read this the best, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. My, I'm gonna try my darndest. Game overview. The card game is a cooperative living card game in which one to four investigators work together to unravel arcane mysteries and conspiracies while simultaneously uh, overcoming personal demons that haunt their past. Uh, each player takes on the role of a single investigator and builds a deck around that investigator's abilities. A series of interrelated scenarios creates a narrative campaign through which a broader mystery is unraveled. Okay. So, the components, uh, we got chaos, okay, so we got chaos tokens, um, damage tokens, resource tokens, uh, clue and doom tokens, they're, they're, they share a thing. Okay, that's, that's similar, that's, um, uh, I think normally doom tokens are shared with, like, a different card, but yeah, alright, alright. Let's see, choose investigators, first game setup. Choose one of those invest lead investigators and give that. P okay, okay. So you 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 select a player one, and that player one becomes a. Um, you, that player becomes like the lead investigator, and they get the campaign guide. The lead investigator is a player who will break ties and make decisions for the group whenever there is a conflict. All right, all right. So it's like the leader of the group. Okay, assemble. Um. All right, all right, and it looks like uh. Yeah, it looks like you can just straight up just like build uh, whatever deck you want, like whatever deck you want, given the cards. Hmm. All right. Let's see. This is definitely a game that I'll probably like watch YouTube videos over to like do it. That's what I do with like any board game. Is I just like read through the rules and like. Actually, I just watch you. I watch YouTube videos and I'm like, okay. And then like by the time I play my first thing, I'm like. Already, I'm like trying to like, I try to be like as much of an expert as possible. Let's see, golden rule, the text on the card directly contradicts the text of the rules, either in this document or rules of reference, the text on the card takes precedent. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's good, that's good to know. Ready and exhausted. Okay, skill tests. All right. Probably just read this like all my. I'll probably just read this on my own. Um, let's see. But yeah, I think I'm really considering like playing this game on stream. Though like it might be hard, you know. Like my the camera doesn't do a good job of like showing everything. Uh, no, Yig, you weren't on the raid chat. I literally just raided someone. I uh, really? I, I'm pretty sure I was on the raid chat. Let's see. Let's see. Was I? Was I not on there? Oh, I wasn't. I forgot. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I totally 100% spaced on uh, doing the thing. Uh, doing the thing. I totally thought I put myself on there. Whoops. Oh well. I think I'm actually pretty close to finishing up. Uh, I'm actually pretty close to finishing up today. Uh, today is just going to be like a short stream of just like opening a card game, not feeling 100. And I need to like pack up for like a vacation. I need to pack up for a vacation I'm taking. So uh, I probably have to go pretty soon. Yeah, so, yeah, short stream today. Thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, I think I'm <laughs> I'm gonna use this attempt to uh, raid someone else, actually. Um, so everyone, I'm gonna go and uh, raid. So when the, stream, uh, when the stream ends, I want you all to go click this link and then go to um, Samantha. Yeah, sorry, Frey, sorry, Frey, sorry, Frey. But yeah, let's see here. Yeah, so we'll go to this stream. We'll go to this stream, and let's see. Let's go and type it. When you go to that stream, oh shit! Sad face. Sad face activated. Type in um, yig. Type in yig raid. There we go. All right, my face is my face is fixed. 
Yeah, type in uh, Yig Raid uh, when we uh, go after after the stream ends. All right, so that's like after the stream ends. Click that uh, link in the chat and then um, head over and just like we're gonna give uh, Samantha a raid because she's been raiding me for the last like couple days. She's been raiding me for the last like couple streams and I'm like shoot. Oh, you raided her too? Okay, cool. All right, well, I'm gonna head out. And I'll see you guys later. Oh shit! No, no, no.